Welcome to my latest 100 days. Today we return to what many of you know my channel best for, attempting an arc map with a dino that isn't really meant to be used. Today I will attempt to defeat Arc Genesis Part 1 with only the assistance of the Sarkasukus, or as I'll be referring to it as the Sarko. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like as it really does help the channel out, and if you aren't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future uploads. Lastly, if you do want to watch these challenges live, come on over and follow me on Twitch. I stream multiple times a week and we'd love to have you there. Without further ado, let's get into the video. On day one, we spawned in the ocean biome, which despite being marked as a hard biome, is definitely the safest biome for new starters and where I will be making my base on this 100 days. When I say safe, that's when you're on these nice little ocean platforms dotted around the place and not in the water, dying to eels like this. I then managed to die to the eel one more time before making my way over to the first mission titled Wave Ray 64. Now to summon the final boss on Genesis 1, I would first have to complete 58 of these missions, which each have three difficulties, Gamma, Beta and Alpha. My playtime on Genesis 1 is actually pretty low, and I have never even attempted the vast majority of these missions before, which I thought would make for a interesting 100 days, to say the least. After completing each mission, you are rewarded with some rewards in the form of loot, and in this first ever mission, I got a mining drill, which was a very useful thing to get. I then gave the beta mission a try, where I didn't have the greatest of times. Ah, uh, yeah. right, I've stopped looking at the chat, Rampy. I blame the chat. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, we're having a mare. We're having an absolute mare. How do I restart? How do I restart? Is there a way to restart the mission? Right, no, we, we, we can't be doing this. I don't, I don't. Right, yeah. No, no. Right. Second time around, however, I did race through the beta mission unopposed and collected some more rewards, which included a nice little metal shield. I then decided to teleport around the map and just have a look for what I could find. That's a Bronto. Look how we... Oh! What are you doing in the swamp? Uh... Might be in trouble here. Okay. It's a bit cold here, lads. Bit cold. No one... F you know, I know it was called Arctic Biome and I probably should have realised that, but... Don't think I'm going to survive very long here. After a trip to the Arctic and Bog biomes, I decided that my best bet was definitely the Ocean Biome, and I decided to set up on the teleport zone that was Ocean East, on a nice ocean platform. I made myself some basic tools, as well as the standard starter game essentials, such as a mortar and pestle, a refining forge, and a smithy. With the smithy now crafted, I made myself a metal pick, hatchet, and a crossbow. The Ocean Biome is rich on berries, so crafting those early game narcotics was a relatively straightforward process. With the narcotics and drank arrows made, I set off into the bog biome to search for my first Sarko of the challenge. It didn't take me long to stumble across this 135 Sarko before having my first encounter with my arch nemesis of this 100 days. What's that over there? Oh! There's a cap rope. Uh, this is, we, we, we do it with sucky grip. Not good, is it, bro? But before we go any further into this video, I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Enlisted. If you haven't heard of Enlisted before, it's a World War II based multiplayer shooter. It has a strong focus on historical authenticity, while of course bringing some brilliantly amazing gameplay to the table. Now what I found amazing when playing Enlisted for the first time was the sheer variety of weapons and vehicles for players to unlock. Personally, I enjoy being an aircraft pilot the most, but I think it's best for all our safety that I don't take it up outside of Enlisted. The campaigns mode in Enlisted is such a unique and cool game mode. You can go to battle in historical campaigns such as Battle for Moscow or the Invasion of Normandy. Each of these campaigns include unique maps, troop types and vehicles for players to unlock. And do you know what the best thing about Enlisted is? It's available on all platforms completely free, meaning that no purchase is necessary. Whether you play PC, PS5 or even last generation consoles, you can all join in on the action. Did I mention that it was also cross-platform? It doesn't matter what platform you and your friends play, as in Enlisted, you can all join the battlefield together. 
So what are you waiting for? Come on over and join the fun by using my link in the description to get some free bonus goodies, including three days of premium time and several orders for troops and weapons. After that little encounter, I returned to the swamp to get my stuff back and knock out the Sarko. However, after doing this, I made what was a fatal, fatal error on my behalf. I teleported back to base, thinking that the Sarko would continue to tame, while I prepared some stuff at base. Turns out, this isn't the case. Uh, yeah, hang on, let me do taming list. Where's my Sarko? Where's my Sarko? It's gone! My Sarko here? Right, what, what's happened to it? It was right here. What eats a Sarko in the swamp? I've been absolutely scammed. If you teleport to AMSD's... Wait. Did people tell me that at the time that I just, just didn't see? Ah... Uh... First big rampy L of the hundred days. That that is a that is a definite first big L. Definitely need to do that. That Sarko. Oh! And why has it got twenty? It's got twenty nine points in what in movement speed. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. All right, it's gonna kill that stuff. Oh, why? Why do you have to pick a fight with a level one forty Stego? You absolutely oh, just. After running into the self-proclaimed Lightning McQueen of the Sarko world, and then watching it die, I found something far, far better. I managed to find a 145 Sarko with 29 points in melee, instead of movement speed. Now that, I could certainly deal with. However, midway through the knockout process, I was rudely interrupted. Why did I get told that you can whip your- Who told me that you can whip out of a cap rope? I've been scammed! Ironically, the bog biome is listed as easy on the biome list, but I'm really not sure who decided to label it as that, as this biome is anything but easy. It must have taken me 15 minutes to recover my stuff, as every single thing in this infested swamp just wanted to eat me, whether that was the X raptors or the Capros, which I was growing less and less fond of every day that passed. Eventually, I did manage to recover my stuff, and after a while, I did knock out the 145 Sarko. I killed a 125 for some prime meat, without realising that it actually had 26 points into HP, and I probably should have been taming that. But anyway, after a short while, the Sarko finished taming up, and finished with 39 points. Honestly, a huge disappointment that it only added an additional 10 points. I always like to start mutation breeding with 40 plus points, so 39 points was pretty frustrating, and the search would continue for now. After returning to base, I decided to take a break from the Sarko hunting, and completed the Wave Ray 64 mission on Alpha. I think this mission might be a reference to the Wave Race 64 game on the Nintendo 64 way back in 1996, so if there's anyone else out there that has played this game, let me know in the comments. With my points earned from the mission, I decided to take the easy way out and buy some pelts from the store in order to make some fur armour so that I could survive the Arctic biome. In the Arctic biome, I decided to take on the Rhino 500 mission, which was another race mission. Now, this race mission would become very important as this challenge went on, as it is actually the best place to get Sarko Saddles. And when I say Sarko Saddles, I really do mean good Sarko Saddles. I completed the mission on Gamma, Beta and Alpha, and then I was finally rewarded with what I was looking for. Oh, there it is. There it is, a nice little Mastercraft Sarko Saddle for the hard work. In the bog biome, I decided to knock out this level 95 Sarko, just so that I had a female Sarko to go with my male, in case I wanted to get breeding the 00s a bit early. I got it some prime and quickly tamed it up, before returning to base where I had a crack at the Gamma Hide and Sink mission, which was actually located on my own base island. This mission was rather painful, and took me a while to work out how on earth it worked, but I soon realised that it had essentially been ripped straight out of the Zonic Adventure 2 treasure hunting missions, which um, I absolutely despised as a child. After experiencing some pain with that mission, I had a much better laid back experience with the Bottlenose Blitz, which is another race mission, as I managed to complete that on Gamma, Beta and Alpha difficulties. I'm sure you guys are all seeing a trend here and thinking these missions are way too easy, but trust me, I'm getting the easy ones out of the way first here. Still on the hunt for my Sarko stats, in the bog biome I managed to find this level 135 Sarko, with some pretty unimpressive stats. Its standout stat was 25 health, but I did think I would tame him up, just to see if I could get lucky. 
Sadly, no such thing happened, and he came out with 34 points into HB and Melee. Pretty much just a throwaway Sarko, essentially. After that disappointment, I tried my hand at another Ocean mission, but I think rather sensibly decided to give up, after I took a battering and appeared to have half the ocean on me. I had sort of started a routine at this point, and switched between attempting to complete a mission or two, and then returned to the bog biome to look for Sarkos. I found this 145 with 25 points into HP once more, so once again, a pretty average Sarko. Due to the level however, I decided to tame it up anyway, and hope for some luck. After taming up, I named it after one of my Twitch subs, and saw that I did get kind of lucky, as it did come out with 39 points in health. To celebrate this new health stat, I decided to take my Sarko to the Lunar Biome to get some oil and metal from the mountain of tech dinos that this biome possesses. At base, I used these items to make a fabricator and then went to the Bog Biome to take on the Dodo Basketball Game. Now, this Dodo Basketball Game has to be the highlight of Genesis 1 missions, and if you'll pardon the pun, I had an absolute ball of the time completing these missions. By the end of this mission, I had successfully transformed into the Michael Jordan of Dodo Basketball and had been thoroughly enjoying myself. These are the raps, aren't they? I'm out of stamina. Hello, senior now. Oh! Ah! Ah! He's poached me! What? Ah! So, just as I was saying how much I was enjoying myself, I decided to try out the Brute Raptor mission on Gamma without realising that it dismounts you. I then managed to die over and over in the bog biome to Capros, which the Twitch chat found particularly amusing, especially on this occasion when Vulpe and the Sarko strolled over to me as I was getting mauled to death. After covering my stuff eventually and teleporting the Sarkos back to base, I took my mining drill to the volcanic biome, where I used it to farm some metal, and sure enough, I found that this thing is ridiculously OP, especially when you combine it with the fact that I can teleport right back into my base. With the metal smelting at base, I began a mission which is one of the most famous Genesis 1 missions, which is King of the Swing. Now, quite simply, I have not really ridden Bloodstalkers very much on Ark at all, so it took me quite a while to get to grips with the swinging mechanics. However, I am pretty good at Spider-Man on my PS5, so despite failing the beta mission over and over again, I was actually having a pretty great time here. No. Go! 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 No! After coming within seconds of completing the beta mission, I completely bottled it on the last stage, and decided to call it a day for now. Instead, I took on a much easier mission, which was the Got To Go Fast mission, based in the Volcanic Biome. Honestly, most of these race missions, King of the Swing aside of course, are pretty simple, so I could swiftly tick off the Gamma, Beta and Alpha missions here, and even get myself an Ascendant Shield as a reward for my hard work. I now return to the King of the Swing mission, determined to conquer it without the distraction of my Twitch chat this time. After a couple of failed attempts, I managed to pass, with a huge 15 seconds left. The Alpha mission was still a step too far for my improving skills however, so I returned to my Ocean Solitudes where I killed some nearby Hesperornis for organic polymer to make an egg incubator. Eggs! Egg, 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 eggs and egg! Yes, alright Ozzy, hold your horses my friend, it's not time for eggs yet. First it was time for some more King of the Swing. At this point I have no shame in admitting that I was sort of addicted to doing this mission, and also improving my skills. With King of the Swing finally completed on all three difficulties, I decided to take on Bog Beatdown for my next mission. What is your thoughts on Ark 2? Why is there a wyvern? I didn't know that was a thing. What? I should feel like I should probably do- Oh no, not a Capra. Not a Capra. Oh, ah, I've got flame arrows. Oh no, I missed. It's poor effort. Why is there a brood mother? I don't like it. Where's the flamethrower? However, I still did manage to get through it on both Gamma and Beta with the help of the flamethrower, which is by far the best weapon I found, although I wouldn't recommend flamethrowing the brood mother. At base, I was forced to do some building. Now, for my long-time viewers, you may know that I often tend to survive my 100-day videos on nothing but 4 or 5 foundations. I'm not the best builder in the world, but it was pretty clear that I wouldn't be able to fit 60-plus Sarkos on this small little ocean pillar, so I got to work. I then started work on my 0-0 Sarkos. Now, I don't have enough time to go in-depth about how I do my breeding here, but if you do want to know more, I would recommend my 100 Days with Raptors video. 
I will quickly say though, for any new breeder out there, it is imperative that you always use 00 females when doing your mutation breeding, so you can keep a clean line and continue to mutate after 20 mutations. I was running out of these race missions at this point, so I was very conscious that I was still well off the needed 58 missions, so things would be getting tougher very, very shortly. After completing the Sabre mission on all three difficulties, I took myself over to the Bog Biome to do exactly the same on the Bog Rally mission, which all went fine until I ran into one small issue on the Alpha mission. What, like, what am I meant to do? It's just a Sarko in the way. With the inconsiderate Sarko now disposed of, I completed the mission on Alpha difficulty before using my mining drill at base to harvest a ton of wood. I used this to make some ocean platforms, as despite my interesting ceiling design, I was in need of a lot more space. These ocean platforms were a lifesaver, and positioned right below my base, I was beginning to quite like this base location. I was almost tempted to make a nice base inside. I said almost guys, almost. With some room for my zero zeros, it was now time to start some mutating. Our starting mutation stats were 39 health and 39 melee, which yes, really annoyed me as it was one point below the 40 plus points I would have liked. However, the first mutation did come in the first 10 eggs as we got a 41 health mutation, which was a very, very encouraging start to proceedings. We had got a couple of melee mutations at this point and we're now up to 43 melee. The one biome I hadn't explored much was the lunar biome. So I took my Sarko a place where no Sarko should ever have to go. I'm coming, Volpian. No, might not be. Oh, God. Oh, God. This could have gone a bit better. Come on, Volpian. Oh, dear. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Ah, uh, we're on. We're on. Let's go. Twitch chat had managed to convince me that this technological terrors mission was easy and that I had it in the bag. I'm pretty sure they just wanted some entertainment at this point though, as it was anything but easy. I hate this stupid place. Oh! What's going on? Where's my Sarko? I don't know! Was not meant to do this mission! I'm out! Uh-uh! No! No! Bog beat down of Luna, no thank you. Where's my Sarkos? Where's Volpian? Where? Where's, this, where's my Sarko gone? It was just there! So, as Volpian the Sarko fell off the cliff and teleported to somewhere in the Lunar Bio, I accepted that I would never see her again. Gone, but not forgotten. Anyway, my main goal was to reach a Lunar Basketball game, as I was such a machine at the Swamp Point. I seemed to be having an issue in the Lunar Biome though, which no one in the chat could quite explain. Normally in the lunar biome, there's no gravity, and you can simply punch yourself around the whole biome. For some reason though, I didn't seem to have that luxury, and after a short amount of time in the air, I would just fall back to the ground. So, forced to give up on becoming the next LeBron James for now, I started up the locks and loaded mission with my Sarko army. This was a hunting mission, where I would have to hunt down a plesiosaur and fight it on three separate occasions. These hunting missions were all okay on Gamma, but the jump to Beta was huge, so I did have to stick to Gamma for now. The last race mission that I would be able to do for now was Dead Heat, which saw you ride a Gallimimus through the volcanic biome. Just like all race missions, this was relatively simple, and I completed it on all three difficulties. On day 54, we really had to start the mutation grinding, and fast. Quite simply, I had left this later than I ever really should have done, and I was worried that the eventual boss Sarkos wouldn't have enough time to properly heal up. After hatching a 43 health mutation, I actually extended the base a bit, and then had to breed the female mutations with a 00 male to ensure that the line was kept clean and I could continue to mutate with a higher chance of successfully getting mutations. As this added more time onto everything, I found myself praying for males on all the mutations, but I'd say my luck was pretty 50-50 on that one. One thing guys to keep in mind when mutation breeding is that it is all complete luck. Sometimes I would go a whole two hours without getting a mutation here, while on other times I would have one within 10 minutes. Mutation breeding requires a certain amount of patience, but if I was ever going to stand a chance against the Master Controller, I would need some seriously strong Sarkos. On day 66, I had finally finished mutating, and immediately had to try and combine the stats, so I could get to breeding with my boss Sarkos. We finished with 51 health and 53 melee, a little lower than I would have liked, but really I couldn't afford to dedicate any more time at this stage, as I still had lots of missions to complete. The Genesis 100 days truly did feel like a race against the clock at this point, to be able to give myself the best possible chance to defeat this map within our set time period. 
The boss Sarko mating took about 5 in game days as once I got a male with both stats, I just left it on mating with the zero zeros and placed a hatchery nearby to pick up the eggs. By day 73 they were all hatched and matured but I still had the levelling process to go and many baby Sarkos to kill. The Sarkos were all still healing from their first few levels and imprinting bonus anyway so I left them to go do some more Rhino 500 missions. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this mission has the best chance to give good quality Sarko saddles, so I completed it over and over again in the hope of getting some decent saddles. I would be doing this mission many many more times before the challenge was over, as primitive saddles just wouldn't cut it against possibly the toughest final boss in the whole of Ark. After eventually getting tired of this mission, I decided to have a go at an escort mission, called Rip It, Roll It and Punch It. In these missions you have to escort some sea turtles safely to home. Now, I'll quickly explain why I had such an absolutely horrible, horrible time doing this mission. So, firstly, these missions seem prone to crashing my game, and upon reaching about the halfway point, I crashed and had to restart. This wasn't exactly the greatest start, and the mission was already beginning to test my patience, but the real issue with the mission is this. The route of the sea turtles takes you right through the depths of the Genesis Oceans, where you may randomly encounter large creatures, such as a Mosasaurus or a Tuso, which aren't actually related to the mission at all. These turtles don't have much health at all, so a couple of bites from a rogue mosasaur, which has nothing to do with the mission, and it was curtains for me. Despite my frustrations, I was really running out of feasible missions to do, so I decided to have one more go. Did it say first? I've just crashed again. I've just crashed! Oh no! <laughs> As we enter the closing stages of this video, I would just like to remind you all to download Enlisted, using my link in the description below. Remember, it is available on all platforms, so I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield very soon. Thank you so much to the folks at Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Giving up on the turtles for now, in desperation I decided to go and check out the lunar biome, a decision I would almost immediately regret. No, nope, I still can't jump up properly. Someone please Google this issue with Luna. I swear I should just be able to like, le le yeet myself across it and I can't. The main problem I was having with Luna of course was for that for some reason I couldn't punch myself around the biome, as I should have been able to, which was leaving me a very easy target for the Tech Rexes. Oh no. Honestly just getting back to base here is an absolute miracle. Please, just teleport me. Please! Teleport! After somehow getting out of Luna alive, I decided it was time to do a spot of fishing, to relax a bit. Only to get a visit from a dino that I'd hoped to never ever see again. Oh, why is it 145? Why do you have to be so high? Ow! He's hitting me! Ah, oh! I, 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 I cannot believe. I cannot believe what has just happened. I cannot believe it! You are taking the mic! After quickly returning and getting my stuff, I decided to take a stab at the Arctic fishing mission. Oh! D! C! Z! E! W, X, X, E, yes. By the way, if any of you actually genuinely uh, voted for me to not get a sequence wrong, uh, say goodbye to your points. Oh shit! Hang on, that doesn't count. That doesn't. That doesn't count. I was trying to gamma up. That doesn't count. At this point, the Twitch chat and I were having some great fun, trying to predict whether I could get through the whole mission without messing up a sequence. I also had this rather odd encounter with a swimming gorilla where he tried to attack me and put me off my fishing. How rude, I know. Anyway, once I got the hang of the fishing, I sailed through the mission with ease on both Gamma and Beta difficulty, before taking a quick stab at Alpha. In the end though, I decided that half an hour of this mission was already enough. I didn't fancy sitting here for another 15 minutes, only to possibly fail, so I set my sights on other things. Other things included the Swamp Placid mission, which is a hunting mission where you have to track down a brute Sarko. I'm not sure there's any way out of it, way out of this. What I thought. Get wrecked. Now, the brute Sarko in this mission actually dismounts you. So while my Sarko and I quivered behind a rock in fear, I sent some Sarkos from my army into battle to do my dirty work for me. 
Returning to base, I went on a baby murdering spree. <clears throat> as I had to level up our boss Sarkos, so they would be ready for day 100. I then headed off into the bog biome to search for my next mission quest. I decided to give bog fishing mission a chance to see what I could do. I actually quite enjoyed this mission once I got to grips with it. The general gist is you have to throw a fishing net and catch as many fish in as possible before reeling it back in. If you threw it on top of a piranha, the rope would snap. I assume due to the fact that piranhas have pretty sharp teeth, so we'll bite through it. The bigger the fish, the more it counted for. I managed to complete this mission on all three difficulties, which was most helpful towards my mission count, but I still had a short while to go. I had to try and make my way up to some of these lunar missions, so despite my difficulties without being able to fly, I managed to use the water spouts to just about make my way up to Space Jam, which followed the same structure as the bog mission, of throwing a dodo into a basketball hoop with the added gimmick of the gravity this time. And it's safe to say that I was as good as this one as I was at the bog one, and I completed it on all three difficulties. After that, it was the turn of the nearby Tokyo Skift, which was the last race mission available to do. This was also okay, although when doing the beta mission for the first time, I may not have realised that I was burning myself to death, and might have died. Safe to say, I wouldn't be making that mistake again. Luckily, my body bag did respawn at the start of the mission terminal, so after making my way back, I successfully managed to complete it on beta and alpha. With doable missions rapidly running out, I had to take on these ocean hunt missions. These missions were incredibly painful, as I found it very hard to see the blue coloured tracks in the, you know, a, a blue ocean. The first one that I opted to do was Who Hid the Squid, where we, yeah you guessed it, we hunted down a squid. After killing the Tuso and passing the Gamma mission, I tried the Gamma version of Another Bog Hunt. This mission was incredibly painful to do, considering how slow Sarkos are. After spending about 20 minutes of my life running around the bog biome on a Sarko, I attempted Spy vs Spino, which was another bog mission seeing you track down a Spinosaurus. I was warned that this was the hardest brute mission, and uh, perhaps it's I should have listened to that. Spino, isn't it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, we might be in trouble. I'm in, in big trouble. I lost both my Sarkos. Campy. Campy. Uh-oh. We're gonna die, aren't we? We're, we're gonna die. We're dying. Uh, Johnny, I would like to apologise. But just know it wasn't me. After barely surviving the Spino, I decided to treat myself to a tier 3 loot crate. Ah, uh, do it. What did I get? I don't feel like that was worth it. They gave me a toilet. They're taking the mi they're taking the mick out of me. They are taking the mick out of me. With doable missions running out and Rampy beginning to panic a bit, I decided to take a couple of Sarkos down to the depths of the ocean and take on the mini boss known as the Modir. One thing I didn't realise, however, is that unlike a regular mission, once you activate this, you cannot cancel it halfway through. In the end, however, the Modir mission wasn't too bad, but I'm pretty sure this was only because the Modir couldn't actually hit most of my Sarkos. This mission is obviously normally meant to be done with the likes of Moses, Tussos, or Megalodons, all which have a much bigger hitbox than the Sarko, so I was mightily relieved to get out of this one in one piece. The next mission in my sights was the beta version of Chasing the White Whale. I now had some better Sarkos, of course, which were expendable, which made these hunt missions a lot easier. I did, after completing the beta version, also try it on Alpha, only to find out that I'd vastly underestimated how difficult these Alpha missions were, and the Sarkos were doing pretty much no damage. It was possible with a lot of Sarkos and some good saddles, but I decided to abandon the mission before we had any fatalities, and turn my sights elsewhere. The ocean biome was where I found myself most at home, which is understandable when I am relying on only crocodiles, but the art gods didn't seem to approve of this one bit. I attempted the Echo of a Classic mission, which was an escort mission, similar to the turtle one that I had showed me attempting earlier in the video. And just like the turtle one, as I entered the closing stages of the mission, my game crashed. I couldn't face doing the same mission once more, so went after another gamma mission called Cheaper by the Pack, which sees you track down a Brute Raptor, which I also tried and uh, failed earlier on in the video. Only for the tracks to stop spawning, just as I reached the end of the mission. Apparently this can frequently happen on hunting missions, but I assure you, this made the whole thing no less frustrating, especially after last mission crashing my game. After two failed missions in a row, I did successfully complete the alpha version of Hide and Sink, which, while originally I found tricky, I had now got used to the system and it was pretty straightforward. Despite the fact these ocean escort missions had a continuous history of crashing my game, I had little to no choice but to attempt the sea turtle one once more. 
This time I made sure to bring some more Sarkos, which was very important, as once again this turtle seemed to take a route, which took him right past a Mosasaur. Luckily my Sarko army took him out just in the nick of time, and I returned the turtles to its mum, which um, appears to be a Megalocheon. It appeared that the Art Gods were finally shining down on me, as after the success of getting through that last mission without crashing, I attempted the Echo of the Classic mission again, and managed to get through that mission also on Gamma difficulty without crashing. I ended up doing this mission back to back on beta difficulty, and the beta difficulty one was far more challenging, but by the skin of my teeth and with Echo the Dolphin being one shot from death, I did manage to complete that one also. Only a few missions off from the magic number of 58 completed missions now, I was forced to take a quick break to spam some quick Rhino 500 missions. On day 95, I spent the full day doing the Alpha variant over and over again to get myself some nice Sarko saddles. As mentioned previously, the boss fight even on Gamma was no joke, but these Sarko saddles that I've collected will give me at the very least a fighting chance. Some of these Ascendant saddles were outrageously good, so my optimism was rising slightly. At base, I rewarded myself with a tier 2 loot crate, and got absolutely nothing of use. Sadly, I don't think the Master Controller could be chain bowlers. In the Volcanic Biome, I wanted to have a go at Out of the Frying Pan mission. I did this because I was informed by the chat that this was the mission to do if you wanted to get pump action shotguns. I did have an Apprentice one back at base, but it wasn't very good, so I thought that I would try my luck. Sadly, I would quickly learn this mission is not Sarko friendly in the slightest. Actually, screw that, I would go as far as saying this mission is not Sarko possible. Once I saw that I was 2,000 meters away from the next checkpoint, I ended the mission right there, as there was no point in wasting any further time. A mission I could do in the Volcanic Biome, however, was the Aloe and Goodbye mission, a good old-fashioned hunt. I then tried the Magma Medley mission on Gamma, which was a similar style mission to the Bog Beatdown mission showcased earlier. Five rounds, you pick a weapon of your choice to fight off waves of enemies, and I learned that the Assault Rifle was the best weapon of choice, and uh, apart from the Wyvern which spawned on the last wave with 150k health, this mission was pretty easy on Gamma that is. It was then time for the last mission, mission 58 and our final mission. It was a relatively simple hunting mission which saw you hunt down a magma saw and apart from the part when it really set me on fire and almost killed me, it was pretty easy. Before taking on the boss, I would certainly need to mind wipe as my stats were not fit for purpose at all. As I would need to be on foot for most of this boss, I opted to go for a mid build character with focus on health, weight, stam and speed and a bit of fortitude to make sure that I didn't freeze to death in the arena. I quickly made up some med brews and energy brews as they would be crucial to any success that I may have. The last step before the boss was to name the Sarkos after my loyal Twitch viewers, most of which who have watched the entirety of this challenge. If you would like to see your name on any of these dinos in future videos, make sure to come drop me a follow on Twitch and join the fantastic community we have over there. And on day 101, yes I know, please don't hurt me, it was time to give this challenge the send off that it deserved. Right, here it is, the finale. The final fight, 100 days with Sarkos only. Can we beat the Master Controller? All the Sarkos are in, I think. They should all be in. I don't know. That the, my worry is that some of their bodies aren't in. Oh. Oh. Rampy's almost not in. Okay. Okay, Sarkos are here. We're in. Let's go. Come on, Sarkos. The Master Controller fight has four phases. In each phase, you need to collect enough keys and then deposit them at the deposit box in advance. These keys can be found all around the floor from killed enemies. This is what made this fight so difficult, as I didn't have the safety at any time of being on a dino. Ah! Lots of nasty things about. Oh! Uh oh. Get me on a Sarko. Get me on a Sarko. We're low. We are low health. Okay. Get me back on a Sarko. Yes, I know there are heaps of keys on the ground. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. How am I almost dead? Oh, we can go, right? We can go. Ow. Okay. Second stage. Second stage. We had got through stage one successfully, and it had been more or less a positive start. I was beginning to wish though that I had brought more shotgun ammo, as I really needed to deal with these drones overhead. I also clocked that the Sarkos were really struggling to hit the fighters on the ground. 
The Sarko's small hitbox due to its long snouts was a persistent issue during this challenge, right. and it was becoming all the more apparent here. Oh god. No thank you. They just can't hit. The Sarko can't hit them. He can't hit them. The hitbox is too bad. Somehow, I managed to battle my way through stage two and deposit the keys at the deposit box. I knew, however, that it would be an uphill battle from here. Both stages three and especially four were crazy difficult. I was also beginning to wish I had prioritized more speed as it certainly could have been more useful. All right. Where's the keys? There they are. Out. I felt like getting to stage four. Is it fair to say that getting to stage four is quite a good achievement in itself? I fed up of getting battered by these things. Oh, there's loads of keys over here. Oh, there's a Rex. That's another Rex. That's a lot of Sarkos. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Trouble, 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 trouble. Come on, Sarkos. I was really beginning to struggle in Stage 3. The drones overhead were peppering me, and the damage was really starting to add up. I was trying to conserve some of my shotgun ammo, but I just couldn't take much more of this. Oh, this... Why am I bleeding? Oh! Oh, it's a Giga! Oh, what the hell? Oh, man. Ah. Uh... On day 101, we suffered heartbreak. My Sarkos had given everything, and actually, to be honest, were holding up pretty well in there. My personal opinion on the fight is if that I was slightly more prepared and played things slightly better in there, I could have got through stage 3 but stage four may have been pushing it slightly. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please do remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on. Thank you so much for your patience in 2023. I realize it's been a while since my last upload, but I assure you we have so much more planned coming up. Next up, I'm returning to Ragnarok, where I will attempt a 100 days challenge with one of the most heavily requested creatures. Can you guess what in the comments below? Before that though, I do have another 100 days video. So if you want to know what that is, I recommend sticking around here for the post credit scene. For now though guys, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and take care of yourselves. Nah, are you there? What happened? Rampy, he took Timmy!